just being in the environment, walking around the, the city and walking around the neighborhood and just seeing how things have changed, seeing how much I've grown as a, as a man, just as a human being, and just where I'm at and my life surroundings, my family, like, it just, everything, just down to going downtown and just, you know what I'm saying, like, really absorbing Chicago and really doing things here, um, working with people here, working with MCs here, working with producers here. It just made me want to paint a certain picture of Chicago um, and, and really paint my own picture of Chicago and provide something that I felt like was a soundtrack to, you know what I mean, my life. Definitely. And that's kind definitely. of what this project is. is just, I mean, it's definitely it's a, it's a mixtape, but it's an album in, in, in a certain sense. It's definitely like a work of art to me, and it was inspired by a lot of different things. So it's really just like an exhibit, and that's kind of where the name took place because there actually is a commission statue downtown in Chicago um, by Pablo Picasso. It's, it's old. It's decades old, but it's a spectacle, and it sits in downtown, and it's just it's a unique sculpture, but it's left for interpretation. Like, it's not very straightforward. It's an abstract um, sculpture. It just kind of sits in front of City Hall, and it's like, People walk by it every day and stop and stare at it. Tourists come look at it. And that's kind of what I view this project as, because everybody kind of is interested in Chicago but don't necessarily know how to interpret it. You know what I'm saying? So You know, I was like 15 years old, and, and literally, I just used to write a lot. And I used to, even during classes, during um, breaks from school, just period. Like I was I always kept like kind of a journal or notebook, and just wrote things in it, random things, whether it be poetry, whether it just be my opinion, whether it just be quotes, sayings, a lot of different things. I just wrote in this notebook, and I just decided to just kind of turned it into a book, um, literally, you know what I'm saying? So it's just a compilation of thoughts and ideas. Um, like a lot of people talk about doing something, but the power of the written word actually, you know, turned into a book and seeing your face on the front of it and things like that, like, make it real. The same way if you're if somebody's telling you they're a rapper, it, it feels more real when they hand you a jewel case that's shrink wrapped and has a real like yeah. you know saying parental advisory sticker on it and a label logo on the back of it like it just feels more real you know what I'm saying <laughs> like that an idea has become a product and so that's kind of really all that, that it is and I'm actually thinking about re-releasing the book or making it available again I mean like uh, like more and more people ask about it more and more people find out about it people ask about it so i'm thinking of making well i won't say thinking i'm probably going to make it available to sale off of my blog that's on dope. brainiac brainiac society.com so yeah that's dope. probably do that soon within the next couple of weeks definitely I mean, we're still trying to figure that out, to be honest with you. Like, we've, um, like, there's a level of success that we feel like we haven't reached yet, you know what I mean, on, on just on a personal, personal level that we, that we want to attain. Um, we care about the music. We're artists. Like, I think a lot of people take that title, um, very lightly. Like, this is an art to us. So, like, we actually care about how the music sounds, not, y'all like it or not, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, like, or if y'all buy it, you know what I'm saying, like, there's a certain aesthetic to what we do, and it has to feel good to us for us to present it to you, you know, so, at the end of the day, we want to put together the, the most cohesive projects that we can and make music that feels good to us, so it feels good when we perform it for y'all, and so, a lot of artists, I don't think, care, I think they just want to hear records, they want to drive Bentleys and fuck hoes and shit like that. <laughs> like, which is, you know, we want to do those things too, but, you know, like, we have integrity about it. The, 
they've had longevity. Like that's what people really don't understand is like when you can be in music, hip hop music, for for longer than a decade, like and and still be relevant, it it, it means a lot. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like longer than a decade. You talking about P Rock? When you talk P Rock, you talking like almost two decades of real relevance. You know what I'm saying? Like like hits, continuous hits. Good hip hop music, you know. When you talk Just Blaze, you're talking about classic albums over the over the period of a decade, over almost, you know, what I'm saying over a period of a of a strong, you know, what I'm saying twelve to fourteen years. <laughs> you know what I'm saying like Just has been making quality records. <laughs> you know what I mean? And our styles fit. You know what I mean? Like his earlier stuff is some of the stuff that inspired me to want to rap in the first place. Same with Pete Rock. So to have people like that around you, I, I just met, I met High Tech like earlier this year and he's another producer who I was like, man, like it was your sound that made me want to rap. So to be around that and to be actually able to work and collaborate with these people is just, is like earlier this year. And he's another producer who I was like, man, like it was your sound that made me want to rap. So be around that and to be actually able to work and collaborate with these people is just it's it's a beautiful thing. Wow, that's a great question. Um I'd say I'd say common, um common, mace and ice cube. Actually I'd say Q tip mace and ice cube. Uh but uh that's that's like just because Q-Tip, he uses his voice as an instrument. He gets inside of the beat. A lot of people rap on top of beats. He raps inside of the beat, meaning that if you're just doing your homework and you listen to Q-Tip, you might not realize anybody's rapping. It'll just sound like a beat is playing if you don't really pay attention. You know, you're able to read a book and listen to a common album because he's not really overpowering the beat. He's inside of the beat. He blends with the beat. Um. So that's that's a, that's a style that I kind of studied. Um, Ice Cube, I always loved that he could he could say like whatever he wanted, whenever he wanted, and he had such a powerful voice. Um, and then Mace was just a fly motherfucker, man. Like <laughs> Mace got the girl, he dressed fresh, he drove the fly with. He was like really the first stunt. That he was the first person who was stunning. That was like cool to me. Like that, like was really like, yo, I would hang out with this dude. Check it out, it's your boy Knowledge Born, Mr. Go Ill, one half of Kids in the Hall, the Chicago Picasso coming very soon. And you know what it is? We with the man Mac Miller, Fab Five Ent, Fab Five Ent dot com, all in your motherfucking mouth. You dig?